When we talk about ageism in the workplace, we often view it as a bias that affects only older workers. But a new study shows that women face age bias, whether they are young, middle-aged, or older. We can't win! And that can impact not only women's ability to rise in the ranks, but the broader economy as well. Here to explain, Maggie McGrath, editor of Forbes Women. Also with us, Huma Abedin, vice chair of the Forbes and Know Your Value 3050 Summit. Great to have you back. Jen's back with us as well. So this was in Harvard Business Review. Tell us more about what the study found, Maggie. It found that women are subject to and suffering from something they call never right age bias, huh. which I think is not a surprise to anyone at this table. Damn but it. I know. So when is, what's the right age? I think there is none, according to this. Oh. The women in their uh, age 20 to 40 reported being belittled, demeaned, their credibility was discounted. A 39-year-old woman reported being patted on the head at work. Patted on the head, which is horrifying. Literally patted on the head? Literally okay. patted on the head. Okay. Um, women in the 40 to 60 age range reported being passed over for roles and promotions because mm -hmm. of assumptions mm -hmm. about caregiving responsibilities and assumptions about menopause symptoms. Uh and and those symptoms being assumed Are to be... Are you talking about me behind my back? <laughs> Unless you replied to the survey. And then, of course, the over-60 set told the HBR researchers that they feel invisible and undervalued. Ugh. They feel like their employers aren't investing in their career trajectories. And so a lot of them are saying, you know what? I want to work for myself. I want to start my own company because that seems like the better way to go. Jen. Interesting. They, um, I also, I love this. I mean, it's just like, it's so great. They concluded there is no, there's no age at which the women are not doubted. Fantastic. Because of their, because of their age. I remember Harvard, <laughs> Harvard Business Review also did a great study a few years ago about women being interrupted. Mm -hmm. And in the Supreme Court, you know, Elena Kagan, and Sonia, Sonia Sotomayor at the time were more interrupted than any other, per, any of the men on the court by a lot. And they concluded there was no level of qualification that was high enough for a woman that she would not be interrupted or just missed. So I feel like what we come away with, particularly when you're in your, you know, I'm 56, is I know this is all crap. Therefore, I'm going to keep going. So I feel like more power, power through it. This. Yeah, just gonna, I've had to power through it. Of course, I'm going to be doubted now, just like before. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just getting started. But um, one of the, you know, they looked at a lot of things in the study. What about the trajectory for women's careers as yeah. individuals and then the broader impact it has yeah. on the economy? Well, you know, I'm turning 48 next week, and a friend of mine texted who's looking for a job right now texted me the other day saying, as a woman, you're always told you're either too young for a job or too old for a job, and that's because the perfect age is when you're a man. Um, <laughs> and I think that there are certain things that are facts, that we are 51% of the population. Women are, there are research that shows that uh, women are better investors than men, that women repay their loans um, uh, at a better rate than men do. So these are facts, these are not theories, and it doesn't matter if you're having a hot oh. flash or you're having babies. And you know, I think the most important thing is having the conversation. We've had the conversation about racism and sexism in the workplace for a long time. We should add ageism to that conversation. All right. And a last piece, which I think yeah. is really important, Mika, is in the work we're doing on Know Your Value, is that a lot of Gen Z women particularly say what they desire most in the workplace is mentorship. And that is mm -hmm. having somebody with experience and somebody who's grown up in more recent years coming together and being productive. That was, so to, to her point, Maggie, what can employers and employees do? You hit on it, Huma. You have to train workers on discrimination and bias of all kinds. We already train for gender bias, racial bias. We need to train people on age bias because mm -hmm. you can't address and fix that which you have not acknowledged. I agree with that completely, and I think we also have to take Jen's example and power through. I mean, yeah. it's yes. hard, and it's easy for us to say, I get that, but that's what we teach. You know, you got to power through and push through and get your value back in every relationship. By the way, of all people... All people, you too, would know how women are criticized. I mean, Nikki Haley being called past her prime and Hillary Clinton during the campaign. It was cleavage. It was whatever. It was facial expressions. I mean, we get judged for everything. And so that's very hard to power through. You've seen it. It is. I mean, I can't count the number of hold rooms and green rooms Jen and I would sit in about how Hillary should react to the ageist, sexist, whatever attacks that she received. And I would argue, and I'm curious yeah. if you agree with me, that, you know, 
it was a mis you know silence equates complicity to to not you know we would just say grin and bear it you know to show power to show that resilience show these male characteristics of leadership yeah and the reality is you got to call it out and i think sexism and and ageism and all these things in politics has gotten worse i mean we're living in a time when the southern we're going backwards. law poverty we're 100 going the, the southern law uh, uh, poverty center has now male supremacy groups it was white supremacy yeah. groups on the rise when we were you know in 2016 the campaign was going so uh, i think speaking up calling it out and defending yourself i was saying it was a different time in 2016 if we had i mean remember that the famous debate yeah uh in kansas no st louis when trump was sort of lurking oh. behind hillary yeah. and you know really trying to physically dominate her and she said afterwards she's like you know I should have told him back up you creep yeah. you, and I was like you know no because if you had done that the headlines the next day would have been Hillary Clinton rattled exactly and we could not have that exactly right. but even though I mean I don't I don't know that it's getting there are examples of it getting worse but I think it's more like it's coming to a head and we are, call, you know, now you can call it out. And, and you, you need to do that. Culture. So we're Power a minute past through. the top of the hour, but I do want to just get one thing in. It's fascinating how this, you know, goes into the political conversation as well and how political candidates are treated. But we're going to be announcing our 50 over 50 list in just what days practically. And Maggie, you say that the competition for the impact list is tougher than ever. Why? What, what's going on? We have more women running for office. We have more women helping women run for office. But by and large, over the three years of doing this list, what we see are women hit their 50s, 60s, and beyond and say, hey, I have time, money, and resources to devote to causes that matter the most to me. Mm -hmm. Some people spend their lives working for a for-profit company and they hit their 50s and say, I want to work for a nonprofit or I want to start a nonprofit. The, this is a community that is plugged in to the problems facing the world, and they want to change the world. Maggie McGrath and Huma Abedin, thank you so much as we launch into the fourth hour of Morning Joe.